Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to look at kind of a fun topic that departs rather considerably from what I normally do on this channel, and that is the smell of death. So what on the molecular level is responsible for what death, or we could say a dead, decaying body, smells like? Well, we're going to cover four very short pathways in this video and see four molecules that are going to be responsible and have some contribution to what death actually smells like. Before we go any further, I want to very briefly talk about the stages of decomposition. The first stage of decomposition is the fresh stage. This is going to occur immediately after death, and it's going to involve the breakdown of the dead person or individual's own tissues. Okay? And this is going to be done via the process of autolysis, where the person's own enzymes are actually going to be breaking their own tissues down. Now, when this is going on, it is probably not going to be very visible. Really, the signs of decay will not be truly visible until you're in the second stage at the very earliest. This is called the bloated stage. And sometimes when you see dead tissue, you might actually uh, see maggots on it. In fact, it's kind of a disturbing sight, but in some cases with people that have type 2 diabetes or type 1 in some cases, where they don't manage their insulin levels and, and sugar intake very well, their legs can actually die. Some parts of their legs actually will be decaying on them while they're still alive, and there can be maggots actually nesting and growing and feeding off of the decaying tissue. That's a sign you need to get your legs amputated immediately but also bacterial growth, and that's going to be the major thing. Bacterial growth is going to begin and exponentially increase, and the bacteria are going to be metabolizing your dead tissue. Hopefully not yours, but you know what I mean. And when bacteria are metabolizing that tissue, they're going to be producing all sorts of gases. Now, I did a video on that a couple months ago or something like that, and you can look in uh, at my channel for that, where we talked about why dead whales explode. And the reason dead whales explode has to do with something that's occurring in the bloated stage. We have metabolic activity of bacteria that produce gases, and those gases are going to cause the tissues to expand and expand and expand. And generally, uh, when the organism that dies is very large, such as an elephant or a whale, uh, there's so much gas that's produced that it can cause the organism to explode. That's why you have a video of an exploding whale or an exploding elephant. With the organism the size of a human, that generally doesn't happen, but the pressure that is being produced inside tissues will cause them to burst, um, not in a violent explosion. And then you'll actually have uh, fluids that are going to be uh, released, and those have very strong odors. And actually, a lot of those odors are going to be produced by these molecules, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. Then you have active decay. In this stage, you have liquefaction of all the organs and tissues. And in this stage, pretty much the body will begin to look unrecognizable. I'm going to make a guess that these guys from The Walking Dead, on average, are somewhere in the bloated and active decay phases of decomposition. Until finally, pretty much all of the uh, decayable tissues are gone. And so all that's going to be left is the, the bones, which is the dry mass, or dry remains, and that's going to be advanced decay. Okay, So once you get to advanced decay, the rate of decomposition is going to decrease because there's really not any organs left to liquefy. Okay, But really, this is mainly initiated by these bacteria. That's what really decays the body. Let's first look at these two simple pathways right here. So the first one is that of lysine. So this is lysine, one of our 20 proteinogenic amino acids. And the enzyme lysine decarboxylase is going to remove this alpha carboxyl group. It's really the only carboxyl group on lysine. And that's going to leave a diamine, a terminal diamine, called cadaverine. Okay? Now, cadaverine is generally not produced by humans in any considerable amount. Lysine is actually degraded through a very different catabolic pathway in humans. So this is not really a reaction we're going to find in mammals. This is going to be purely bacterial. But cadaverine is going to smell really bad, as we'll talk about in a minute. We have a very similar reaction down here. This is of ornithine and the enzyme ornithine decarboxylase. So ornithine, recall, is an amino acid that we actually find not in proteins, but rather in the urea cycle. And ornithine actually differs from lysine just by one carbon atom, so one CH2 unit that our group is actually going to be one carbon shorter. 
Ornithine decarboxylase basically does the same thing, however. It's going to remove the alpha carboxyl group and still leave you with a terminal diamine. This one, however, is called putrescine. Okay? And you can probably guess where each of these names come from. Cadaverine comes from the fact that it's the smell of cadavers, or dead bodies. Putrescine comes from the name that it smells putrid. Okay. Now, both of these are going to be produced in very large amounts by bacteria that have infiltrated the body and grown during the bloated stage of decomposition. Specifically, the smell of rotting flesh is attributed to the molecule cadaverine, whereas putrescine is more like putrefied flesh or garbage. To be honest, I don't really know the difference between those. I imagine they both smell terrible. Now, while cadaverine is not produced by humans, putrescine actually is. Um, it's involved in polyamine metabolism, and it has some other functions which we're not going to go into here. But the amount that's actually produced by a human cell is very small compared to the amount that there's produced by the bacteria, which is why generally when putrescine's made, you don't actually smell it. But only when you have the decaying body and there's so much putrescine being made, do you actually smell this rancid, putrid smell. All right, these two products are gonna come from uh, your basic amino acids, lysine and ornithine. The other two products are gonna come from tryptophan. So let's talk about the uh, simpler one right here. That is the enzyme tryptophanase. Uh, this is the same enzyme you test for when you do the indole test in microbiology. This enzyme is going to convert tryptophan into indole. Basically all it's going to do is this entire thing up here at the top, it's just going to break off. Now it's a little more complicated than that, but it leaves us with this molecule called indole. This is a process that does not normally occur in humans. Keep that in mind, at least by human cells. The other pathway going down is going to give us another molecule called scatol. So it's going to occur through a series of four enzymes. The first one is called tryptophan transaminase. That's actually going to convert this amine right here, this alpha amine, into a carbonyl. And that's going to give us this molecule, which is called indole pyruvate. Then the enzyme indole pyruvate decarboxylase is going to remove this carboxyl group right here, leaving an aldehyde. And this molecule is called indole acetaldehyde. Indole acetaldehyde is going to be oxidized by indole acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Notice that with this hydrogen right here, it gets replaced with an OH. Technically, the bacteria would actually give an NADH out of this reaction, but we don't really care about that. And this molecule is called indole acetate. Finally, indole acetate is going to be decarboxylated by indole acetate decarboxylase, and this entire COOH part is going to be removed and all you'll have left is a CH3. And so scatol, which is the product for this reason, is actually called methyl indole because it's basically the indole molecule right here, but it has an extra methyl group at the top. And so these are very, very similar molecules. While indole has more of a musty, stale smell, scatol actually smells of feces. Again, two other molecules that smell exceptionally bad. It is also worth mentioning that even though indole and scatol are not the primary reason a fart smells so bad, they are both released when a person or a cow or something has flatulence. So hopefully in this video you got a good understanding of the processes of decay and then the bacterial metabolism that produces some of the products that are associated with the smell of decaying flesh and decaying corpse. All right. Hopefully this was good. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.